What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. You're listening to Lyles Movie Files. We have way too much stuff because folks lost their full minds over the course of this last week. And we got to get all into it. So I'm not going to do a long opening. Just say what up to the fellas. Chief, Javon, Jace. We're, how are we doing tonight here, fellas? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good deal. Let me just jump right into it. Right away, there's so much stuff, and I'm just going to go with the first thing that comes to my mind. The Academy Awards, after a lot of discussion and debate, have decided they're going to postpone this most or best popular film award that was slated for the 2019 awards. So now Black Panther gets its shot at being nominated for Best Picture. And I'm kind of curious in terms of your thoughts on this, because on one hand, Just knowing the way the Academy voters are, Black Panther is not going to win the Oscar for Best Picture. And I'm curious if you guys think, in this case, being nominated really is more important than winning a popular film award. And I know it's kind of those things where... Yeah, this is a consil- or that's just the, hey, this is the brainless blockbuster award. But in this case, I feel like Black Panther probably would have easily won that one. And I'm not so sure that it's going to, going to win that uh, best picture, let alone if the results of these last few film festivals, where there are a lot of buzz of some upcoming films, will even be nominated. What do you guys think about this? Chief, let's start with you. Well, uh, you know, the uh, the, the most time these uh, Academy Award, the, the best picture, is some sappy film that nobody ever saw. Most of the time, isn't, isn't that what happens? I've, oh, I've yeah. yet to, that's, has an action film ever won best picture? You know what I mean? It's, it's I usually think it's some picture the like King The Notebook. One, the last Was that an action film? Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, uh yeah, I don't I don't see a Marvel comic book uh uh movie winning. Um so, you know, uh, like the, the I think we the, the last time we discussed something like this, the 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 winners were movies I've I've never even heard of. Or if I heard of them, I you know, one one year and out the other, I didn't care to see them. So, uh, yeah, I doubt pretty much that uh, Black Panther went. Do they have an, a, a, a great action movie? Uh, um, you know, is that part of the, uh, is that one of the, uh, one of the categories? Well, see, the, Good the deal was, movie, great action movie? This category, this popular film was basically going to be the Oscars attempt to bring in a younger fan base to attract the people who actually go and pay to see movies. So those Mission Impossible Fallouts, Avengers Infinity War, Fast and the Furious, Jurassic uh, Kingdom or Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, Star Trek, Star Wars, those kind of films would actually be in the mix to legit win an Oscar. Nowadays, it's films that come out over the next two or three months that will get all the Oscar acclaim. Maybe there's a film that comes out in February, March, that manages to hold a little bit of attention and come through in the end. But mostly it's just the films that haven't even been in theaters and in some cases won't be in theaters until January. So it's it's a screwy process and I'm not a fan. I understand why people are concerned and upset about the popular film category. But for me, that was okay because it was going to award films, Oscars, that because of stuffy Oscar voters were never going to get a chance. Still the pat on the head awards, so it really doesn't matter who wins. For me, if I'm a filmmaker, winning the Oscars pity award doesn't really do anything for me or the, or the quality of my film. It may have been popular amongst the people, and that's great, but... And I, I, I doubt that anybody who makes films who gets uh, nominated for that award is making films so that they can get the pat on the head award for the Oscars, right? It's just why don't you respect these movies and, and, and put them in the real cat and put them in real categories? 
Make a best action, a best comedy film. Embrace this is the Academy Awards for films, right? So embrace all films. Embrace them all instead of trying to come up with the pity award. Because the pity award don't do nothing for nobody. It just shows how out of touch you really are. That you're giving out the pat on the head award. It's it's stupid, get rid of it and make category make more categories, right? That people you want you want people to watch the Oscars, give them categories for films like Black Panther, like the action genre, like the comedy genre films, give those uh, films an award category so that they can actually have something to compete for. So that people who really don't watch and normally wouldn't watch the Oscars will watch to see which of the films that they saw this year will actually win an award. Make it mean something instead of just this pat on the head award. The only problem with that one is... The show is way too long anyway. So and they've been trying to streamline it to keep it under three hours. So they're showing some of the other awards on, oh, during yeah. commercial breaks. So I oh, think yeah. the big thing they need to do is drop Dig some it. of those musical the thing acts. Is, yeah, drop the musical acts and drop those awards. Nobody cares who won the best documentary or the best makeup. Or, who cares? Uh, see Nobody thing, cares. Drop those awards. If you're really in the film, those things are cool and they shouldn't be slighted. It's just they're not what what mainstream Joe Blow public cares about. But I don't think they should be But that's what I'm saying. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not slighted. They're still winning. It's just if you want to draw more people in, you're going to have to cut the fat. And the fat is the stuff that they don't want to see. Most people don't care about those awards. Show the ones they want to see. It's, I, I think it would help Oscar viewers to know that award isn't in play, especially for people who are actually rooting on Black Panther to win the award. I mean, I know they said it was going to be 2019 when they, I mean, 2020 wasn't going to be the next year's Oscar, but the the fear was is like, hey, you gave Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, Best Picture, and you gave it all the accolades. There's no reason Black Panther shouldn't be up for that. It's not like the story was bad, the cinematography was bad, the directing was bad. There was there's you lose it just because um, Return of the Kings was written uh, over like you know 50 plus years ago doesn't make it any mess more of an action movie slash fantasy movie. So having Black Panther not being in that consideration just it made no sense. So glad to see, I, I'm actually glad like I said, I'm glad to see they dropped that award. I they still think drop, you, they didn't drop no, it. No, 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 even they if they post Yeah. But to just to put Black Panther in its actual correct categories and not get, even just giving it the the first popular movie award would have felt like such a slight to everybody who wanted to see it actually win best picture. Like even it's not it, going to win best picture. That's the whole thing. So no, why are you saying it's that? It's just, it's not, it's not going to Okay. No, no. Okay. Jeff, the, 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 the Oscars voting expanded over the last two years. Like they've included, you know, not the old stuffy, uh, 70 year old white guys. Like the, the, the voting panel has been expanded. I'm telling you, it's not going to win because there are films that are coming out that critics are raving about. Critics who are still the majority of the Academy voters and like the Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper, Star is Born, First Man by Ryan Gosling and Damien Chazelle. Those films are going to be the ones that get pushed hardest for Oscars. And because Oscar voters have very short attention spans, those are going to be the ones that gobble up those awards. So okay. with Black Panther, it was going to get nominated, maybe, probably. I mean, it was probably going to get nominated because they didn't want to have a super major outroar. But it was not going to win. It's not going to win because it's a superhero movie, one. Two, because there are other more Oscar-skewing films that are going to be in the mix. Whereas if that popular category was around, it was going to win. And there was going to be no question that was going to be the winner of that. Why do why you say that? I mean, I think Infinity Wars would have had a chance at that. Because it didn't have the same cultural relevance as Black Panther. Okay. Numbers at the box office show that out. People raved about it. Marvel's Kevin Feige, he said, this is the best movie we've done. This was even after Infinity War. Hype was underway. Uh, lots of people throughout the world not just america not just black america love black panther but okay. it's not those oscar films that win those awards typically okay but the people voting in both categories are the same voters so it's like you're saying oh it has all this I mean, every one of the reasons you say why it would have won 
the best, I mean, most popular, also translate to the actual people that are going to be just like, yes, it's going to be in that category. It's now going to be in best picture. So now, if you, if Mar- since Marvel is actually taking an actually proactive push to actually push this now as best picture, they're not, they're going to re- release it in um, January, whenever, whenever war season starts, it is going back into, it's going back into the theaters, like to remind the Oscar voters, like, hey, I know this came out last year and you guys, your attention span is so short, but guess what? This is the best picture this year. You know you need to put it as best picture. Like, you get the younger voters. And we're, don't not, give a- we're not debating that it's going to be nominated. It's just not going to win because it's not like their normal Oscar. Because they added in all these new people and Get Out was the last year's best film. So, he won a screenwriting award, but in the end, it was a traditional Oscar film that won Best Picture. And as much as we would like that to not be the case, it's still the case. It's, even with the new addition of new voters, they still have that same traditional block of people. I mean, people, there were some crit- critics or some voters who didn't watch Get Out. They didn't want to see it. They're right. not going to watch Black Panther, and they're not going to vote hmm. for it as Best Picture. Maybe they'll okay. throw a bone and nominate it, but it's not going to win. I I don't agree with that, and I, I mean I think we I could yell at you, though like for the next half hour, because I don't think there's any difference from this movie than Return of the King. I don't think and as, <laughs> you don't well, think there's I don't, any difference. No, I don't. I I think there is no difference other than the fact this is titled a superhero movie. If, if you put Black Panther into a novel 50 years ago and made this movie, it's no different. Okay, so uh, Tolkien is revered among critics, and some critics read it in class and school in their free time, so they love that. It's a fantasy thing. There are no black people in the Return of the King or the Lord of the Rings franchise, and so there's one huge major difference. So most of the critics are like, hey, this is us, and then with Black Panther, it's like, well, I can't relate to this. Maybe more open-minded ones are like, wow, that's cool. That's amazing. I can't believe they put this incredible world together. Others are going to be like, I don't need to see it. I don't care. It's a black film. Eh, I've seen it already. You know, okay. and, and I don't like comic book movies. Okay, then that's that's where the market. I mean, like, I, I think last year they said Get Out didn't have a as strong a marketing campaign. It's like you got to put it to the point. It's like, hey, you watch the damn movie. Like, hey, don't look at it as everything you've heard is a comic book movie. It's like it is an action movie. It's like just because, like I said, if Tolkien, yes, yes, Tolkien's book and all this has been out for 50 damn years. It's like, you, you look at the damn movie. We sent you a damn screener. We'll, we'll host some Oscar parties. We'll, I'm going to, I'm going to take it down. I'm not, but you, we're going to give you every opportunity to watch this movie. We're not, we're going to host some screeners. We're going to do our customary parties. We're going to do everything we can to get this movie in over. If it doesn't win, that's, that's on the, I mean, it's like, hey, I mean, they, they, they do the good push. They actually try and push it versus, like, Get Out was like, hey, we want you to watch it. But then, like you said, you had a whole lot of Oscar. I, I don't want to watch it. It's not our kind of movie. But fish porn isn't anybody's movie. Like, fish porn had to be pushed out to say, hey, what's, what's his name's in the club? But we got a movie about fish porn. I mean, what movie are you talking about? Go ahead. Like, is, you, you hit fish porn better than me. So, please. You need to talk about the movie. <laughs> I mean, I, that is nickname. I mean, I... I I look at I look Shape at it this water. way. Um, Shape of Water and Get Out are in a different vein than Black Panther. The biggest the biggest issue that any and this is coming from me that any of the Oscar uh, whoever votes on Oscar worthy films, right, especially for Best Picture, that Marvel tag attached to it. It's a summertime yeah. blockbuster. Even though it debuted in February, they're gonna re- they're gonna just deem it as more child. Uh, what is it? Kid pandering, comic book movie, loud explosions, thin on script, character development, big on action and explosions, Drek. That's what they're going to deem it as. And it's unfortunate, but that's how people look at That's how people like that look at things. They don't look at the, the depth of what this what the project was. They look at, okay, this falls in. We're going to lump this into that category. Okay. And it, that's, that's where you have – that's where you ha- have the Oscar parts. You, you, you basically – 
do like a months long campaign to get over their biases. Oh, like yeah. that's why you have oh, the pos- yeah. parties and all that. Like, hey, this is it's like this is but no the- different than any other act- good oh, action good action movie. Chase, definitely. I feel what you're saying, but here's the thing. It's like telling people who are burning the Nikes that they purchased that Colin Kaepernick's message isn't anti-America, anti-police, anti-soldiers. It's like sitting there and trying to explain that to him. You might as well be trying to explain quantum physics to a duck. At the end of the conversation, all he's going to be thinking is quack and, and, and worms or whatever ducks he eat. He's not going to be they, – they digest what they want to digest, how they want to digest it. You'll be wasting your time trying to explain that to them. They're already going to deem it, no matter how much effort you put into the push, they're already going to deem it. It's already going to be a lost cause to them. Them because well this isn't traditionally an Academy Award film. Exactly. Like, okay, That's well, all I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They need to change their definition. And once they bring in more new blood, maybe ten people. years well, from I'm now, going. that will change. But right now, there's yeah. still it's still way too uphill battle. And and in the, in Black Panther's case, I'm kind of torn because yeah, I mean I think with the way Marvel was going to do it, they were going to have it up for Best Picture, and it was probably going to win popular film. And I'd have been fine with that because I think it should win an award, some awards, for what it did. But I just I don't trust the Oscar voters to give it all the accolades it deserves. But that's it for Black Panther. Let's move okay. on because we could just keep talking yeah. about this for the whole show. <laughs> all right, let's move on to something slightly more lighthearted. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj apparently had a big blowout at <laughs> some Fashion Week event. And Cardi B went so far that she threw her shoes at Nikki, and then she charged at her. One of Nikki's bodyguards tried to move her away, gave her a strong elbow, let's say unintentionally, gave her a big bruise. So now we've got two of rap's top female uh, stars almost coming to blows. Will we get any good albums out of this or good diss tracks? Chief, what do you think? I don't know. Hey. It's all a bunch of silly nonsense to me. I, <laughs> uh, you know, um, they just did a, they just did the the, the motorsports vehicle, uh, the motorsports video earlier this year, which was, you know, um, which I thought both their verses was, it was, you know, pretty decent. I don't, I don't know. It's it's something about women, man. You know, that that thing where you can put two dudes in a room and. They can get along. They can find something to get along about. And then you put two women in the room and they hate each other. I don't know what it is, man. Um, and uh, you know, uh, but I, I don't. I don't know if they're gonna do a, a diss song or not. I, I mean, they're trying to. They're really actually trying to fight each other. I don't, they, <laughs> we might just get. We might be just some strong Twitter fingers going on after this. But um, we'll see. But uh, you know. I don't I don't know what's going on nowadays, man. Uh, it seems so like nobody can just get their money and, and drive in their own lane. This is not the second coming of Biggie and Tupac, huh? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm 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 still waiting for um my man M's uh diss track from uh 'cause uh the way uh MGK got at him. Now that was that I said, you know, and I didn't even know who MGK really was before this. But uh, yeah, now that that I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for M's response. Yeah, so, you know it's coming. Yeah, and it's gonna be brutal when he brings it. Javon, what do you think about this? Nothing. Look, we always we know women are always in competition with each other because it, it, I don't know what that that stems from it, it's almost at birth man just to watch it being around women my whole life I, women are always in competition with each other I, I don't know what that's about they just cannot get along really <laughs> like women really don't know how to be friends I, don't, don't get me started on that but these two I mean between you and been throwing subtle have shots. all these female listeners turning off the, the podcast here that's, that's good. Oh, well, I'm I'm sorry that your nature dictates these kind of things. Blame me. Yeah, I'm I'm Nike right now. But anyway, um, it that is 
th- this whole thing, it's like niggas been throwing subtle shots at Cardi, I guess because another female came along and is taking some of her shine. Like Chief said, there's hey, it's enough lanes on this highway for everybody to drive. I just think Nikki didn't have no com- Nikki didn't have no competition when she came out. She ain't had nobody. Mm-hmm. There was no other female MC out there that was taking the kind of shine or getting the kind of shine she was getting. So she had no competition. I guess she couldn't deal with the fact that Cardi's success is being what it is. As far as them fighting, I don't never like to see two women, especially black women, fighting over dumb dumb nonsense. Especially this. Mm-hmm. But both of y'all little Kim clones anyway. <laughs> so I mean, really, what are you fighting about? What are you fighting about? And both the of y'all are, amen. Hey man, both of y'all got your bought your bodies, bought your looks, and you copied Lil' Kim's. You followed her blueprint to success, and y'all mad at each other for what? You for what? Nikki should be mad at that doctor that got her out here looking like a uh, one of the mannequins from a uh, Victoria's Secret, one of the plus size uh, Ashley Stewart mannequins or something. Yeah, just stop it already. Just make your stupid music and and show your butt cheeks in your videos and 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 call your fans Barbies or Cardians, whatever, and just make your money. It's enough. It's enough for everybody to eat. There's no need to go rushing the buffet. Jay, what do you think? I I always say I think one of the reasons why we think we we see women can't fight each other is because they think there's so many li- limited spots at the top. It's like just there, you look at the charts. There's only there's more, probably more men represented than there are women. So, especially in music, it really comes out. It's like, hey, I can't let you eat because if you eat, you're take you're definitely taking food off my plate. In the streaming era, that makes no sense. It's like most of y'all get mo- your money from who who's listening to whatever album based on the streams on Spotify. So you're not taking money out of anybody's place. So that 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 that's just stupid. Like, and. When it comes to those two, I, I think Cardi, I mean, Nikki, I think the assumption is Nikki thinks Cardi owes her something because she came after. It's like, no, like Javon said, you're cloning little Kim, but you pay for a different set of body. You, you play for different plastic surgery. So y'all, y'all should all shut up. Like you, you guys are, I mean, just sing, like I said, just sing <laughs> little raps and make as much money as you can. Cause you're, I mean, I, I just, I laughed cause I was like, I literally remember what, and, uh, what's her name? Nicki Minaj was like in that first Usher video. She was with him, and now today it's like, come on, just it, it's like, yeah, yeah, you you paid for your body. Congratulations! It's helped you keep a lot of fans. It's helped you uh, get a couple extra downloads. It's like, hey, I'm sure it's already been ta- tax deductible. Congratulations on both of you for that. But there's no reason to come to blows. It's like you don't. Nicki doesn't need to be praised for what she did. She didn't do anything revolutionary. It's like. I mean, so just Cardi's just like, hey, I, I used to have a different life, but now I, I came to rap. I'm happy. So I don't, oh, but she doesn't know her anything. So she, I don't think they're going to get any good diss tracks out of it, unfortunately. Like, um, I mean, the fact that they, this is actually a lot different than uh, some of the bad boys. These, these, these two actually tried to come to blows. So it really wasn't like talk, verbal talking smack right. shit. Like, you know, unlike the, the, unlike the guys that do records. Yeah, like, <laughs> they these, actually these two are actually them. doing it. <laughs> So, uh, like, talk about it, be about it. Yeah, I mean, hey, I, I, I'll give them credit for that, but I, I, I think they just, they just need to kind of go take it back to the other side. Just if y'all want to do something, do something that can make y'all some money, man. Not. But uh, let's, let's talk about that over aggressive bodyguard. I mean, how do you elbow Cardi B? Uh, if you were trying to protect your client, you protect your client. I don't care who it is rushing at her. Cardi B, I mean, really, you can't just hold her another way or push her off hey, another Cardi, way. Cardi B look like she got some fire. I'm not you, you her. seen that woman? Man, yeah. you got to Bill Lambeer her to keep her away yes. from her. Hey, yeah. I'm, get, hey, I'm hey, sure Cardi bodyguard... Cardi B is a crazy move. I'm sorry, Jace, go ahead. I said, I'm sure Nicki Minaj will be giving that dude an extra bonus for making sure that bride didn't get in her face. She'll talk that, oh, you should have let her go, you should have let her go, but then she's going to be like, yeah, if she lets her go, she'll let everybody go. So, you know what? I'm going to give him an extra Rolex or something for a Christmas present. Like, he did his job. But he's in a stern, stern you message. Don't come into pain on Nikki. Exactly. Let me tell you something. Cardi B is a crazy little Dominican chick from the Bronx. She got a knife on her at all times. She can't tell me no different. Can't tell me no different. He did, right? Hey, I would have kicked her in the chest front ways. Get out of here! 
Hey, I'm serious. This is you okay? I'm not trusting her. <laughs> so I'm not trusting her. Hey, not trusting that. There's no talking her. She's gonna. She's coming to fight. Yeah. Hey, she had a little bar of soap on her forehead. She wasn't even crying. She was like, I'm going to get her. I'm going to see, see her again. That's what that face, when I saw her face, that face said, I'm going to see her again. Watch. Uh-uh. I ain't messing with her. I ain't messing right. with her. Let, let's go to another more unfortunate side of rap. Uh, yesterday, the news broke that Mac uh, Miller died at age 26 of an apparent overdose. And the chacked up thing about this whole deal is that he apparently has been struggling to get over his breakup with Ariana Grande, who has since moved on, gotten engaged, and is apparently living her best fight. Uh, Miller had a DUI incident, wrapped his car around a post. He's been in so he's been in a bad way, and unfortunately ended yesterday with his drug overdose. What do you guys think about this? Have any thoughts? Um, one of the big stories that's come out of this is because people have no common sense and can't put one thing as another incident without trying to link them. Instagram trolls attacked Ariana Grande's page, and so she decided to shut it down while people get their feelings out a different way. Chief, what do you think about this? I think um, drug, drug use is overdose at times. Um, it is what it is. Um, it's the nature, the nature of, of, of the things you do. Um, you know, uh, if, if that's your choice, if you're, you, you know, you're a drug user, and you're, you're on something stronger than, than marijuana, weed, gas, whatever you want to call it. Uh, eventually, uh, you, you may overdose. I mean, pills, uh, you know, coke, heroin. Um, I mean, they got drugs out of you know, they got. Synthetic drugs nowadays, designer drugs. You can you can die pretty much from whatever. Um, but I mean, that's what drug users do. They they you know they they overdose. So Mac Miller, whatever his problem was, whether whether you know it, it may not even been the girl, so to say, he was a drug user. You know what I mean? Um, he was a drug user when he was with her, apparently. So you can't say, oh, he, he, you know, he's he's just fighting addiction. Um, you know, um, the the crazy part is really what sends you to drugs. So that that's let's start there. You know, you like is it boredom? Is it? I mean, what what what? You know, when you first like when when crack first came out. And people started getting hooked on crack, and you felt sorry for them because you didn't. They didn't know the devastation that would come up. You know that would come up on them following. Um, you know by using crack, you had no clue in those early stages what you would end up being. But hell, you've got new crack users all the time, and you're thinking to yourself. Well, what would possess you to use crack or heroin or meth knowing what it does in the long run? You know what I mean? It's one thing to, I guess, drink and can't control it, become an alcoholic, but you know what these other things do. There's, there's, there's only that road. There's no other road with, with certain drugs. You're gonna go down that road. That that is you. Um, so to to be around a group of people and somebody pulls out a crack pipe and says, "Hey man, you you know you want you want to hit this?" and you're like, "Yeah, I'll you know I'll take a, I'll take a hit of that," knowing where that ends up. And I never understood that about people. Um, you know, Whitney, Bobby, you you being, being in the entertainment business. You know, you start out, but you know where that road goes. Everybody knows where that road goes. You know, marijuana and sports. You 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 hitting the J with your friends in the office. You know where that road goes. Eventually, they're going to pop a piss test you. You're suspended. I mean, I think about Josh Gordon, man. This dude can't get – he's been out of football, what, three years, two, three years now? Just coming back uh, the end of last year. 
and and had to go to like a little extra rehab thing this year for 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 drugs like like you know where that road leads man i i you know and we're 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 regular guys here you know we go up we we work regular jobs this that and the third and we're not drug users and let me tell you being on this end we're poor you know what i mean to to that degree where you we don't have we don't go to sleep like yeah man you know i can go out and buy a ferrari and buy the bar out you we've got problems real problems and not to say that other people don't but money isn't one of them when you're a celebrity like that you can do a concert you know um whatever you want to do to make the money. I just never understood, you know, people knowing where the path was and and and, and still getting on the road. So, you know, rest in peace, you know what I mean, to and to everybody else who, you know, who goes down that road, but you know, we've got to stop people from we we've, we've got to stop people from going down that road. You know? Um so and I you know, I didn't listen to his music. Um, I didn't really have a, you know, I, I couldn't, if you had a gun in my head that said name, you know, a Mac Miller song, you know, I tell you, go ahead, squeeze, because I, I can't. But at the same time, you know, it, it's just bad to see anybody, anyone just just throwing this, this life away. It's already too damn short. And then, uh, you know, seeing you uh, hooked on drugs and, and making it shorter and, and, and less fulfilling. So that's that's my that's my my words. Hey man, I don't necessarily think we need to go any further. That was good stuff. Let's move on to another incident. No, I'll say that for later. So Jeffrey Owens, who most of you all know from the Cosby Show, played Elvin, Sabrina's husband. Um, good decent dude on there, funny. Was shamed recently because he was doing a gig at Trader Joe's in between acting gigs and he became you know the whole story of him this big famous actor now working at trader joe's sent the internet a flurry people were like ha ah, you're working at trader joe's he's a decent guy from all accounts he wasn't like a trash celebrity where it's like good you deserve every bit of this um so it's one of those things where the internet kind of finds its way in the trash pile again but a lot of good came of it Lots of people, celebrities like uh, Terry Crews, uh, were were going, hey, man, good for you. Keep it up. It's hard out here in the grind. And Tyler Perry was like, hey, man, hit me up. You know, I kind of blow Tyler Perry off sometimes because of Medea, 100% because of Medea. But he actually did make good on this. And now Owens has a gig on Tyler Perry's has and have not. So he's on for 10 episodes. So that's good work for him. A lot of, you know, kind of thinking about it with these Cosby Show actors who maybe haven't had a big deal after that. Um, They were getting that money from the Cosby Show. And I'm sure those residuals weren't a million dollars, but probably a decent amount to keep, you know, the lights on or whatever. And with them kind of in that weird blacklist limbo status because of Cosby himself and his issues, they're not getting that money that would otherwise be rolling in. So I can understand why I'd have to do that. So now Owens is going to be on Tyler Perry show. What do y'all think about this whole saga? Uh, Jace, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I think I think somebody tried to make, I mean, like when they were trying to make fun of it, I mean, it wasn't just like, oh my gosh, is that so-and-so working a regular job? It's like, it's been 20 years, almost 30 years since Cosby was off, show was off. It's like, like you, you don't think he was like rolling in Ferraris and doing like, you didn't see him out there? Living anything other than a regular life, so I mean, he 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 did. He was doing what he needed to do to put food on the table. I'm glad he was like, I'm not ashamed. I, I'm doing what what men are supposed to do. I keep food on the plate on the table. Like, I don't need to act, act bougie about it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not working as an actor, but I have jobs, and that's that's cool with me. So I, I'm, but I'm like I said, I'm I'm glad that some good came of it. I mean, I mean, I'm sure he's like, I was working a job. I didn't really need to go to Hollywood or whatever, <laughs> but to get him back in some roles, that, that's that's cool. I mean, now, I think we also need to, like, I'm, I'm sure there are people, like, if 
somebody saw Kevin Spacey or somebody like that working at the Trader Joe's, they'd be like, good for you. Like, I mean, that dude. But it seems like Gary Young was like, hey, I'm, I'm just a regular dude trying to put food on the table, uh, keeping my keeping my kids good. So I, I think, I mean, it's it's good. That, like I said, it, it's good. Glad that some good came out of it. Hey, one thing I always try to remember is that most people are stupid and you just got to go from there. Um, to the people who were making fun of, 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 of what's my man, Jeff, Jeff Owens, Elvin. So the people making fun of them, look at your life. Look at your life and think really hard about every element of your life. What elements of, of, of your life, if we were to put them online, would, could people make fun of you? We already know would they make fun of you. Of course, the answer is yes. Everybody wants to be the biggest, baddest, mean girl on the Internet, right? And think about what you're making fun of him for. You're making fun of him for taking a job and putting food on the table. And like Jeff, like Jay said, sorry, hey, having a, a what eight year run on the Cosby Show as anyone not named he's uh, Bill Cosby. <laughs> hey, you didn't make the lion's share of money, okay? At some point, that money runs out, and not for nothing. It's not like, and this isn't a role on him. The acting gigs don't come as fast and frequent as they used to. And not even people like Keisha Knight Pulliam, uh, 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 Malcolm Jamal Warner, Tempest Bledsoe, Lisa Bonet. Hey, their phone, phone didn't ring off the hook for them even when the show was over, right? So with that said, it's not like you were on a Cosby show and you made a billion dollars at the last and sustain you for the rest of your life. And you're going to have lean times, man. Just because you were on a hit show 30 years ago, 35 years ago, doesn't mean that your 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 life is golden for the rest of the days. You're, you're, it's not a gravy train on biscuit wheels, man. You're going to have to do what you got to do to survive. And thinking in that vein, I challenge anybody who made fun of them, I hope it gets to your ears, what would you do if you lost your job? What would you do if you lost your means of providing for yourself? You would take a job, wouldn't you? You'd take another job. you take it or do something to put food on your table. So how could you ever knock someone for doing that, even if it's not it's something that uh, their chosen profession, and we know that uh, acting, et cetera, is, is glamorous and, and it's Hollywood, lights, camera, action, but it doesn't last forever for everybody. Everybody's not promised the next gig. You're not promised the next big role or a big role period. You got to do what you got to do. So look at the scope of your life and tell me if if you've ever done anything not worth laughing at before you start laughing at somebody for, for paying their bills. Grow up. Stop being a – stop trying to be the Internet's mean girl. This is my problem with it all, all of it. You don't need it. And and to the woman who took his picture and posted it online like you were shaming him, now you apologetic. You're a piece of shit. You're a real piece of shit for that. Cause you tried to you tried to laugh at this guy, make him the butt of a joke for providing for his family. Go away. Don't don't apologize. Just go away. Speaking of other good. people who really absolutely should go away, we finally get this big expose on Les Moonves and him trying to sabotage and in Janet Jackson's career for Nipplegate, and this report broke down how Moonves was infuriated that Janet Jackson did not apologize like Justin Timberlake after that whole controversial incident where Justin ripped apart a uh, part of her shirt to reveal her pasted nipple that was on TV for 0.257 seconds before it was shifted off to something else. Anyway, so Justin initially was like, yeah, you know, it's just part of our plan. Ha ha. But then he was really apologetic after Moonves threatened to end his career and not let him perform on the Grammys. This was right when he was doing his, right when he started his solo break, when he had just left NSYNC and was becoming a solo star. So this was the peak of his, well, not the peak. This was the start of his real career. Janet Jackson apparently did not have such a apologetic response. Justin apparently was in tears and really, really apologetic. And Janet wasn't so willing to kiss the ring. So Moonves decided, 
uh, Viacom and all of its stations and radio shows were not going to play Janet's music. And she wasn't allowed on the Grammys. And he effectively blackballed her on everything that he had any access to. She had an album, Demita Joe, that was scheduled to be released or just been released. And because of the lack of airplay, it didn't do as well as it otherwise would have. And you can kind of see the trajectory of Janet and Justin's careers after Nipplegate. Justin took off, became a big star, uh, performed at the Super Bowl, ha ha, and has otherwise been, you know, a huge celebrity, been on movies, um, had his star really on the rise. Janet saw her status kind of fade out. And it's kind of this weird thing because her career was kind of on the downslide anyway, and this accelerated it. So now with the news, uh, Moonves was still like, even as lately, as recently as 2012, uh, Janet was released in an autobiography and it was done under one of the companies under Moonves. And he was like, how did this slip through the cracks? And I'm going to fire whoever let this book come out. So he's held this grudge for a long time. Of course, karma being what she is, finally gets him back because right now he is on his exit strategy from CBS due to all the sexual harassment incidents that really would have damaged CBS. Yeah. Not so much showing one nipple for two seconds. Anyway, um, what do you guys think about this? Cause I just think this is just ridiculous and not something that we didn't really suspect, but just kind of like, man, this dude who was doing all this trash stuff is like so up in arms for something that's embarrassing when he's doing something despicable. Oh, uh, Chief, what do you think first? Oh, uh, it's it's you know, uh, that's that's not surprising. Um, usually people who 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 do the most judging have the most bullshit about them. I found that to be. Um, and if you look around, you know, it's funny. Uh, just like uh, was it Asia Argento? Yeah, with the Me Too movement, right? And um, all that, you know, fussing and yelling and screaming at Harvey Weinstein, and then it turns out, you know, you done raped a a 17-year-old boy yourself. Yeah. So, um, and that's, you know, and it doesn't surprise me. Like I said, that stuff doesn't surprise me anymore. I figure, you know, if you're doing, if you're one of those people who are, always in the midst of something, always shutting down all the people, always putting your finger at someone else, judging. And you'll usually find that person has quite a a quite a big graveyard in their closet. You know what I mean? Not just a skeleton or two. They they've they've got bodies. Um uh, you know, and uh they tend to while they're pointing out your stuff, they tend to ignore theirs. Um and it was funny, I was thinking, you know, this always reminds me of uh, our illustrious president here, who, and, 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 and hear me on this, before, before any of this came out, before he started this, I never, I didn't think about Donald Trump at all. I never had a problem with Donald Trump, like, coming up. You know what I mean? He was, I lived in New York. I remember him being a figure in New York when I lived back there in New York, so on and so forth. I did started to dislike Trump when he came out with this um, this birth certificate thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he was he was coming out with this birth certificate thing. Then on the flip side of that, he's the one yelling fake news. But it was okay for him to provide that fake news. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I hate people like that. It it. It irritates me. If you're going to be fair, be fair all the way around. You, 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 if you're going to judge others, then your plate has to be clean. It has to be clean. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can't judge others and, and your, your plate, your plate be dirty. That's why I don't judge others. I'm going to tell you right now, I keep a dirty plate. My plate is filthy. <laughs> and so for me to turn around and tell you what you can or can't do or how you should do something or I wouldn't do it like that or you should turn left. Why didn't you turn left? 
listen, if it makes you happy, do it. I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't get into all that. But for people, people love to judge. People love to say things. People love to, to get in the midst of something and, and be dirty on that other end. Be dirty on the other end. My man from the cult. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, yeah. I remember he was, he was saying something about somebody, and I forget what it was. It's been a while now. And then you get caught drunk driving. Like, you have to be, you can't make a statement about your players and then get caught driving drunk. It's just not, you, you have to, when you know you're not clean, you know you're not good with what you're saying, sometimes you got to shut up. Just sh- 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 shut up. <laughs> and uh, people don't do that. People don't do that. People will come out and, and, and judge you right there. And they are screamingly filthy. And, and, and so that just goes to show you, it just goes to show you that, that people ain't worth a damn, man. So listeners out there, you getting judged by somebody, don't worry about it. Their closet is, is, is way more involved than yours. So that is just, is just the way it is. So she, you know, all these people have something to say about something and they're doing wrong too. And that's what I'm saying. You can't be perfect. So instead of instead of taking care of uh, judging other people, you worry about your own stuff. That's what you need to do. You need to worry about what you're doing right. And as long as you're worrying about you, trying to improve yourself, you can't get involved in none of that. So you know, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad to see this happening to him because you karma. Karma is 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 the loveliest woman ever. They say karma's a bitch, but I love her. Cause she She's comes beautiful. around, She's yeah. Beautiful. She comes around. She settles everything. She settles everything. If you wait long enough, she will settle it for you. She'll be back. And um, yeah, yeah. You just you know, listen. She wait long. Sometimes she gets. Sometimes she gets to somebody instantaneous. But other times, all you gotta do is wait long enough, and it'll come right back on around to that person. And you just sit there with your popcorn. You know, sometimes I like to sit there with my popcorn in front of the person. So, but yeah, so so that's the, so that is what it is. So, you know, indeed. All right, Jamal, what's your take on this? You know, I I knew it was. I remember watching that right because I was really watching that Super Bowl just because I wanted to see the Matrix Reloaded commercial, the trailer. Um. And all of a sudden, Janet Jackson's titty pops out, right? And I remember all, all of the backlash, all of the fervor. And I remember distinctly Justin Timberlake having the, I didn't, what did he say? I didn't know that that was going to happen. Uh, it, it was Janet and her people. He actually deflected and placed the blame on Janet, if I can remember that correctly. Because I remember all the radio stations over the next week were talking about it. And I know Justin was just a pawn in it, but this is what I always say about folks like that. You want to dance with me until the music stops. Read between the lines and what I'm saying. It's okay for you to make money with us, off of us, et cetera, until it's time for you to get in trouble with us, right? Justin, he got his, he got his safety card. He kissed the ring. But you were in on it, too. You were in on it, too. Your hands are, your hands are dirty. His hands are Your dirty hands are because they were the ones that did anything. They, thank he, you. His you hands wrapped. You, you said you didn't know about it, yet at the part of your song, when it says going to have you naked by the end of the song, you pull out the mystery flap that exposed the booby, And you didn't know anything about it. Hey, I, that's why he lost a lot of points with me. I always knew he was a sucker, but you just really showed it. And look, I understand where Janet was coming from, dude. I'm I'm Janet Jackson. You can try to take what you will from me, but I'm already made. I'm established. I'm already I'm already in the game. No matter what I'm going to eat. That, if, if that means you're going to affect me how you affect me, I can deal with the punishment on that end, but I'm not going to kiss your ring. Hold your hold your point for a second. Now one thing in this latest okay. Rolling Stones article, they reached mm-hmm. out to her and I was disappointed because I wanted, you know, and she gave the standard no comment deal, but I just want one of these celebrities who's been wrong and screwed over to be like, yeah, he did do that. And I did not apologize enough. 
He tried to screw me over, but I'm still here because I mean we know what's happening now. We we can see all, all everything's laid out. And I just want them to be like, look, yeah, oh, that did it. happen. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I like, understand how that game is played because throw it out there on them. No, I mean I dig that, but I understand how this game is played also because even though it's against Les Moonves, he's got a hell of a network himself. And you don't know who of his business partners will affect you from making money down the road. You may need somebody in his network that Mm -hmm. will still work with you because at the end of the day, it's all about money. But I don't need him to go and collect in a favor from that guy just because he's still carrying a cross on me, especially now at this stage and what's going on with him, because he may start beating that drum again. So it's a strategic move. Sometimes you just got to stay silent in order to maneuver. And that's yeah. probably what she's doing. I dig it. I've had to do it myself in my career. And when I'm in a position to, once again, to, to exact my revenge or strike down on you, I'm going to exercise my right to do so. I'm going to exercise that right to do so. But for right now, I'm playing ball. So I guess that's where she's coming from with it. It's just, this is what happens when you place the wrong people in power mm-hmm. in, any, in any realm of life. In any realm of life, this is what happens when the wrong people have power. They they use and abuse, and they hold these. They, like this is a petty grudge, dude. For what it's worth, for whatever it's worth, whoever the MTV because remember MTV was responsible for producing and, and and putting together that halftime show. I wonder did anybody from that realm suffer any consequences, right? Probably. Yeah, right. So you can't just focus this blame at Janet Jackson and. For less moon viz, now look at your empire. It's crumbling around you. You're still going to be good. You're, you're a very wealthy man who's got a lot of contacts in this business. You'll be on to the next thing. It's just like Chief said, you, you, your closet's filthy. Your house is filthy. Stop judging other people's homes, especially when you kind of called on them to come and do work on your house. Because for real, they knew Super Bowl shows were suffering. They brought, they wanted to build some kind of controversy. They wanted to have a big event, big show. Now you got to deal with the consequence, the backlash, whatever it's going to be. You got to deal with it now. This is what you wanted. You wanted these people to do it. They did it. They got you the headlines. Now you got to deal with it. Now you got to yeah. deal with it. All right. Let's move on here. We're in the home stretch of this one. La- uh, not even last season. Maybe two years ago. Marvel Netflix released their fourth series and it was unlike the other three Daredevil, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage Iron Fist did not get a warm reception. People were oddly upset at the fact that Iron Fist was not recast as an Asian character despite the fact that the guy was white in the comic books and it doesn't necessarily work in the same context if it's an Asian lead. But for some reason, people were complaining about that, saying that wasn't right. And and then just due to shoddy acting, water motion fight effects or fight scenes, it just never worked. And it was a painful 13 episodes to endure. Easily the weakest season until Jessica Jones season two came along. And it just, it didn't work. But Netflix kind of did not want to hang up and get out of the Iron Fist business. So after a little retooling and Defenders and even more in just one episode of Luke Cage, we're back to the drawing board with Iron Fist Season 2. And Netflix sent along six episodes of it uh, for press. I was able to watch those six. And then yesterday I finished watching the rest, the remaining four, because this time they dropped from 13 to 10 episodes. Smart move because a lot of people complain that those Netflix shows go a little too long. But anyway, so Iron Fist 2 is maybe the most dramatic turnaround of a show I can recall. It was, it felt like a totally different show with the same people. And I cared about the supporting characters. Uh, The Meacham siblings are actually interesting now. Uh, Colleen was always cool. And Danny is actually a cool, interesting character. Uh, The bad guys are complex and have motivations that make sense to them, which is really all you need to have a good villain. And the fight scenes are incredible. I mean, so every everything on that list of why Iron Fist season one was bad, season two fixes. 
And there have been some people who've been trying to no sell and be like, eh, it's okay, it's watchable, eh, you can tolerate it. But no, it's really good. And it's it's so much better than the first season, and it's good. It hangs up there with some of the better Netflix seasons. Jace, you've seen a few episodes. What are you thinking so far? Okay. So I, 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 I was one of those people who was not in love with uh, <clears throat> Iron Fist season one. It, it wasn't it wasn't good. I mean, just let's let's. I mean, that was called Spade a Spade. It wasn't good. You couldn't say, oh, this is a really good show. It was a slog. It's basically 13 episodes. You're like, I don't care about any of the uh, side characters. Colleen was probably the one that was more interesting. And I didn't know about any of this uh, comic book stuff, but it was like, oh, looks like there's something there. Versus the rich kid drama of I want my money, I want to control. It's like. I have no sympathy for these people, so I sure as hell don't want to see. And it wasn't like they were the smartest backstabbers in the world, so it wasn't like you could learn anything from them. So I, I was I was kind of good. I, I, that's the one Netflix show I have not gone back and watched uh, season one again, just to, while I'm cleaning dishes or something. I'm three episodes in on season two. I actually, it was probably 12 o'clock when I started watching them. I think I wrapped up everything around three o'clock because I'm like, huh, I should go to sleep. Wasn't because I actually was like, oh gosh, this is like a slog that put me to sleep. Like the first season that I decided to go to sleep on and woke up at six o'clock in the morning and had that judgmental Netflix thing. Uh, do you want to keep watching Iron Fist? And the answer would be no. This one, I was ready to press the next episode and like, oh, okay, I got to go to sleep and get some stuff done for uh, Saturday. So like I said, three episodes in. I'm gonna probably wa- I'm probably gonna watch uh, the ne- probably in, like an- another three of them today. It's a much more improved show. Like you said, the fight scenes are a lot better. There, you can see kind of the mo- like the people from season one have like are now much more complex characters. And you're like, uh, okay, now now I see what y'all should have gone with last season. And now it's like it, like I said, it's a lot a lot more fleshed out. Um, if anybody thought Finn Jones sucked, um, I think that should have gotten kind of alleviated from Defenders and especially from his uh, one episode in a Luke Cage. That should have kind of got over. It was just the bad. The, the, the script on season one just wasn't great. And I think they I think they fixed that. And I think the people know selling it, just trying not to say, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I watched all epi- I, I watched all 12 episodes in a week. Like they just try to they, these are the, those are the folks that just like trying to say, Oh, I don't want to act like it son was good. So like, just say it was good and move on. There's nothing wrong with having 20 things being good. It's like everything doesn't have to be great, but you can just say, yeah, it's good. You'll enjoy it. So I think anybody who wants to watch Iron Fist this weekend or over the next week, you 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 can watch all 12, 12 episodes and won't. I mean, at least from where I am, it's 10 episodes. 10 episodes. You can at least get through this first thing. You'll be like, oh, this is a better show than I watched last season. I think. And if they if you say you've watched them all 10 and they're good. I think that most people will agree with you. Hey, Chief, Javon, what are you guys' thoughts on Iron Fist 2? Are you going to give it a shot? I've already started uh, watching it. So oh, Chief, what do you think about it then? So far, so good. Um, it's been, uh, I'm only like two or three episodes in, but uh, yeah, so far, so good. The start of the story is just starting to develop, so we'll see where it goes from there, but uh, yeah, it's definitely the Definitely, like the, the the last one, man. It, I don't I don't even know. It just never quite picked up. It stayed slow the whole entire. This one started off, you know what I mean, in it, and it, and, it, and it stayed pretty good. It stayed on a on a on a pretty high point where the action, uh, the storyline, so on and so forth, is um is going pretty well so far. So yeah. I'm, it, 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 the first two or three episodes in or better than the last two or three episodes in from last season. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it a whirl. I haven't started watching yet, but I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, I haven't been disappointed by one of the Marvel series yet. I may stay away from season one since it's gotten such a glowing endorsement from everybody, but I'm the eager problem to see with it. it. The problem is you really will appreciate where everything, where all the characters are from season two from watching season one now season one is not a good show but there's so many layers to the characters that you have to watch season one to appreciate it 
Like it, mm-hmm. it's one where it's like, eh. I mean, it's never like outright terrible because there's some shows where it's like, oh, end already. Iron Fist first season is just kind of there. Like it happens 13 <laughs> episodes ago. I think the worst part is is Finn Jones' hair because it's just it looks very Justin Timberlake post in sync or or in in sync era, and he needs it cut. Oh, Once he gets it cut in Defenders, he becomes like a cooler character. I don't know what it is. It's just some weird visual thing where he just looks like he should be singing bye 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 instead of fighting people. Yeah, that'll take mm-hmm. you out of it. Yeah. So you have to watch the first one because it's like, oh, wow, this person who I hated the last season is actually good. <laughs> I mean, it's weird. It's weird because it's like, man, I can stand those characters. I could not stand those characters last season. But by the end of the first one, they were starting to make the change. So they were teasing the changes that they were going to have in this season. And it's kind of like, oh, I get it. And it, it it doesn't make it never never really made me like the characters in the first season, but all those changes make sense as season two plays out and develops to the point where I was like, wow, I didn't like these characters at all in the first season. I really came around on them in the second. I want to see what happens next, which is I don't necessarily know if that's the case with any of the other shows, with the exception of Daredevil. I mean, and Miss, Misty Knight is cool and just amazing. So, yeah, she's all over. She shows up, um, which I do think is a spoiler because they've shown tons of photos of her in it. But, yeah, so it's good. I, I, I suffered through the 13 to really enjoy the second season of Iron Fist. Yeah, it's, it's not like Inhumans season yeah, one. Gosh, no, which I still haven't finished oh, watching, wow. by the way. Yeah. yeah. All right, Chief, okay. I know... You are the lone man here who had uh, the good common sense to go pick up Marvel Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. What's your, what's your take on it so far? So far, it's pretty good. Um, I've, I've gotten into it. It has a pretty, it's been, you know, been action-packed. You know, the, uh, and then, I, you know, I read today online where, you know, people were mad because the graphics, they took out from the graphics, but you never knew that they were taken out. You you wouldn't know that they were missing. So um, yeah, I've been playing and uh, I've been actually enjoying it. And as soon as uh, we finish here, I'm gonna go back down and uh, get back into it. Yeah, are um, the controls easy? Because it looks real complicated. At least watching the videos. You, you know, um, to some degree, it, it's it's a lot of you know uh, R1 plus R1. And then R2 and R2, and then, you know, circles, circle triangle. Uh, it, it's somewhat, I mean, you're going to have to get some, some, you know, as you continue to play, you're going to have to, you know, I guess you'll develop your, you know, what the hell's going on better. So right now I'm kind of clumsy with it, mm-hmm. but um, five or six hours into it, and I don't mean that one sitting, but five or six hours into the game, I should be pretty good at trying to, you know, knowing what I want to do. Good deal. So, oh. All right. We're we're in the rapid last few minutes. So let me go real quick. Fellas, there are lots of choices, lots of options this week. Who is your dummy of the week? Jace, let's start with you. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I hate to do it, but I'm loving... uh, the uh, anonymous leak uh, for making this uh, lovely administration look like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> like, hey, who did it? I didn't do it. I, hey, I am not Mark Furman. I am not Deep Throat. Okay, you put me. Um, and basically, that's a ball of <laughs> people like, hey, we, we, we love these tax cuts and these judges. So, yeah, we'll let this maniac continue to run this show. It's a, it's a perfect working environment. I, I'm thinking anybody who is supposedly has some decency and hasn't quit, I'm going to call them the dummies a week. And I apologize. I say I try not to do politics on this, but it's been engulfing us up here, so I had to. So hey, now that's hey, my Jason, Jason, this is no longer politics. This is just a, a reality show. It's a reality show now. Yeah, I guess that is true because it's like, hey, we we the, the people, the people of the uh, 
Wisconsin, Florida, and Pennsylvania and wanted a reality show, and they're, we're getting it. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I'm, 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 I'm going to leave you guys too. I mean, I'm going to say anybody else didn't vote. I'm going to actually call y'all my dummies of the week because this is what you got for it. All right. Uh, Chief, what's yours? Uh, my dummy of the week. <laughs> you, you know, sometimes it'd be, sometimes it's a lot of choices and sometimes you get down to, uh, but I think my dummies of the week are going to be the people who did not know the difference between Tom Selleck and Burt Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> rest in peace, Burt. Um, <laughs> Tom Selleck uh, and Burt Reynolds are two totally different people, and 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 I don't I don't even know how you got them confused. Um, so yeah, those are going to be my dummies of the week. There, everybody was you know rest in peace with a picture of Tom Selleck, and I just couldn't figure that out. So those are going to be my dummies of the week. You know what I mean? All right, choices. All right, Javon, you can only do one. Just because uh, I don't want you I, taking my other one. All right, so, all right. I'm not going to take yours, and I'm going to keep it to this week. To all the dummies like Big and Rich's stage manager, whoever he was, that cut his Nike socks up to, and, and, and couldn't wait to show Instagram, this is how I feel, America, Nike, you don't get sad calling America hating Kaepernick and all you idiots burning your thirty dollar uh, Coles Nikes in, in in front of your stupid <laughs> house. They, they, you think that's hurting Nike's bottom line? No, their demographic ain't you. It's people that look like me who go out there and buy four hundred and seventy five dollars shoes from my youth that only cost one hundred and twenty five dollars when they came out. It, you're not affecting their bottom line. Trust me. Their stocks fell two percent. That's for this week. That's because of the the, the shareholders who 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 uh they, who who backed out and they're idiots. They wait till you get to three weeks from now and see those sale returns. It's gonna trump. Well, I hate to use that word, but it's gonna far eclipse whatever losses they're experiencing now from people who aren't their target demo. And why are you burning your own things? What point are you proving? And look at. These same people who feel like they are Captain America, you, you, you're missing, you missed the point, and it's not because you missed the point because you're ignorant. You're missing the point because you're stupid and racist. You're stupid. They go hand in hand. Look, it's long been explained that the protest is not anti-America. It's not anti-troops. It's not anti-police. It's anti-people who are, it's anti-police who violate the rights of African-American men and women every day. That was the earnest of this whole protest, and you've taken it and morphed it and manipulated it into something else because instead of looking at a problem for, for what it actually was, you, 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 this really boiled down to large Negroes not doing as they were told. And that made me feel insecure. That made me feel scared and insecure. So we, 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 we manipulated and perverted this message. You're the idiots because you just don't want better. You don't want better. For anyone, you don't want better, not even for yourself, because getting over this irrational judgment or fear, whatever it is you can classify it as, requires you to become a better person. So you just hide behind these blanket idioms and statements like like a true idiot would. So good for you. Fall on your sword. Set, better yet, instead of setting your cheap Nikes on fire, set yourself on fire. Do us a favor. Good deal. All right. I'm going to save the Aretha Franklin pastor for Gunner because this, yeah, I'm going to save them for him. I am going to talk about Jennifer Swan. She's a columnist for Rolling Stone. In her article that came out uh, yesterday, she talked about the inside the Kanye helmed Pornhub Awards. Now, uh, Kanye apparently hooked up with the porn company on their first ever awards. But my favorite part of the story was Jennifer was complaining about the porn stars barely wearing anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Did that really happen? Yeah, they had an award show. But I mean, no, no, no. she was complaining the porn stars weren't wearing what she wanted the porn stars to wear. She was complaining they were half dressed in like several times, not just one time, but like the porn stars times. are half dressed. 
Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's like going to a football game. Why are all these niggas wearing helmets? Why is everybody got a helmet on on the field? I can't see them. Why are they throwing the football in the football game? Why are, they, why are they running when they should be throwing all the time? Dang. What is wrong with people, man? People are wearing basketball jerseys in this basketball game. What's happening? I don't get it. Dude, what are they doing? I mean. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I, I get it. I mean, Jennifer's all up for, you know, females being not viewed as objects, but porn stars not wearing any clothes. That, that, so that means Hey, look, I can see if you went to the, like, the Spirit Awards or the... <laughs> <laughs> you went to the Golden Globes and there's Jennifer Gardner with half a titty out like Lil' Kim. But, <laughs> oh, man, know your audience. Know your audience. Like, oh, why? Okay, better uh, yet, why are you, if you were complaining about the Porn Hub Awards porn not being dressed, why are you, well, it's like, you're not looking at a fashion show. Like, you came okay, in there and you know, Kanye, was, like, Kanye I was going off his, his uh, I think he had oh, the, the stars, actors, actresses wearing designs from his Yeezy brand. But... <laughs> I still don't understand how you would complain or or be offended by porn stars. So, yeah, it was amazing. So, that that wins for me. Oh, yeah. Fellas, we got to hit the road. It's Saturday. We did a special edition so because we had too much stuff to talk about. Thank y'all for joining me. Thank y'all out there for listening. This crazy, wild, packed episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed. Next week, we've got our very special episode 50 coming up. So hit us up. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about. And we were going to have a supersized edition for that one. So that's it for this one. Once again, this episode of Last Movie Files has been filed.